Hello everybody, welcome back to Dominions 5. We're continuing the tournament finals where we were playing as M.A. Ulm. And this is turn 51. Let's see if there are any interesting fights here. Ah, yes. So if you remember, at the end of last episode, I had suggested that um, Jotunheim would probably try to jump on my capital. Uh, because he's been doing that a lot, and the the map position, it kind of he had raided a lot of the stuff around the capital. So I anticipated that and move patrolled onto my capital, expecting a couple of thugs, not just one. And he sent two, and we were ready. Oh man, we just triggered his berserk before he got a chance to 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 bless, which is nice because he had because he has a an axe of. Uh, Hate. Yeah, so we just kind of uh, wreck his stuff. Um, excellent. So that worked. That worked as planned. I don't think there are any other significant encounters. Oh, we haven't seen. Um, I mean, just because we haven't seen a lot of fights be in general between East and uh, Van Roos. Oh, this looks like Van Roos was... He just had, like... He's just fighting with whatever he happens to have left in his in his fort. Um, and uh, East is just going to take this with the Siege Chaff and maybe a few uh, Morgans. So this isn't actually super... Super interesting. Yeah, he's just got five knights, and they do almost all the work. Okay, so unfortunately, nothing too interesting happening there. Um, we're unfortunately still a little bit short. We aren't able to one pop to one turn pop the uh, the walls on this fort. Um, so we're moving around this area here, trying to gain more lands, more fort, more forts from Jotunheim. Uh, Scrotty are slow to recruit, so um, you know he, Jotunheim still has income. He still has a lot of lands. He's got forts, but now he's only got one fort here, one fort here, and a fort here, a fort here. So he's got four forts that he can recruit from, as opposed to eight. So. You know, it's making it harder and harder for him to replace his raiders. Um, and honestly, we're kind of evenly trading now in terms of the rating, like in terms of number of provinces. Um, so things are gradually shifting to, in terms of the economics of this, um, things are gradually shifting in my favor. I, I still don't see any way he can kill my Doomstack here. So gradually, I could just move on to, you know, all of his forts. But there are sort of strategic reasons why I can't do that. I can't just move this big army over here because maybe East comes here and, and wins the game by taking this throne, right? Now, it's not... My thinking at this point is, like, I'm playing for survival. Like, I just have to not die, right? The, I'm in an existential war. Um, I'm not in a position to, you know, go ahead and challenge East right now. Um, I just have to hope that the other powers are able to slow him down or stop him. And then hopefully when they do that, I'm alive and I have a play, you know, in the rest of the game. So honestly, Jotunheim's in the same position. So is like Bandarlog, right? Like there comes a point where... So you have a game leader. In this case, it's East. I mean, it's been East for a while, right? Then you have a bunch of other major powers, and then you have minor powers. And the other major powers, it's kind of their their responsibility, but also out of their own self-interest. It's their responsibility to make sure the game leader doesn't run away with the game. If you're a minor power, then yes, it's true that you can't win if the game leader wins the game, but you're so, but you're not, you might actually literally not be able to do anything. But more importantly, suppose you dedicate the small amount of resources that you have as a minor power. Like, let's take Bandar Log as an example, right? Who's like truly 
I don't know to what extent. Well, he's obviously not a fighting Van Roos anymore because there is no more Van Roos. But like, should Bandar Log be fighting East right now? I mean, he only if he gains something, right? Like, Bandar Log. The only way Bandar Log wins, which obviously, let's be honest, it's not going to happen. But the only way he could win is in some scenario where East does not win and gets countered by a coalition from other players, while that's happening, Bandar Log does something, as yet to be determined, and is then on a competitive footing with all the remaining players, which might include East, who kind of failed, let's say, a throne push or something like that. So for, for Bandar Log, that could be joining in a coalition against East and then grabbing a bunch of territory that East happened to have before. And that might be his only option given the geography. But it could also be um, fighting another neighbor. Although, of course, that other if that other neighbor is supposed to be in the coalition to fight against East, and that's bad, right? Because you're distracting somebody who's going to stop East from winning the game. So the better example here is the war between Jotunheim and myself. Like... Jotunheim and myself are locked in a war against each other. There's no easy way for us to peace out. I mean, I have his cap, right? So, like, there's no easy way for us to peace out and then decide to fight East. And literally, we don't border him. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm, I have to go through Scrotty and then Van to get uh, to border East. So, I am both incapable and also it's not in my interest. Like, what I have to do to win the game is hope that the other guys can counter East and then when, hopefully win, have my war won against Jotunheim by the time that happens. That being said, I can't just like leave an easy opportunity for East to win. And that's why I'm getting more and more nervous about this uh, throne over here that I need to reclaim. And that's why I'm also nervous about this throne here because these are kind of my responsibility to protect. Now, I'm not too worried about this one yet because I know that East isn't going to go for this until he's secured the rest of his thrones. Um, Vanarus is still putting up uh, a fight, and so he's East is devoting most of his strength to taking this uh, throne now, and then after he'll have to move his stuff there. So right now, the only thing that can come from East to attack this is like a magic phase thing. So he could do it, but it would only be like a thug or two, and that's something I can fight against. Um, and, you know, diplomatically, this was mine. So he'd be breaking his nap with me. Although I would totally expect that at the end as he's trying to throne rush. So um, I'm playing with fire with this throne right now. This is something that I can defend. I can and should be defending. And that's why I'm keeping this army around here. Um, so anyways, so that's going on. I think we talked about all our moves. So let's go on to the next turn. Uh, that was turn 51, so let's go to turn 52. Let's see if anything significant happens in terms of uh, fights here. No, it looks like a ton of raiding and the counter raiding and independent events. So let's look at the map. Um, we there are still there are two werewolves on top of Roca. Um, we are going to try to clear off this fort. We're tr we've got pretty good control of our provinces down in the south here. Um, we are finally getting our army together here. Our counter raiding forces have been consolidated. Um, and notice that there's a diminished number of Scrati around here. And we are now going to move in force into this over onto this throne. This should be, uh, the wall should be broken down, so we're going to siege it. Here, there's just a bunch of little army raiding and counter raiding. By the way, Carl has, like, every affliction ever. Lost an eye, weakened, chest wound, limp, battle fright, dementia, and lost both arms. Our hero with tough skin. <laughs> it's all those scars that he has that have toughened his skin. Um, Jotunheim has been sieged down forever. Um, 545 still, because I think we have dudes in here. Yeah, we've got dudes in here. Um, okay, but now we're making a, a move to come back onto our throne. Let's go on to turn 53. Um, 
I think I could be wrong, but Inden and Vanheim have stopped fighting over this province, and I think that they have finally, at this point, perhaps it was last turn, um, decided that they were going to help and try to stop Ys. Um And uh, it's a little late, guys. Um, and the reason it's a little late is because Vanarus has basically been defeated. So, in addition to the logistics of the actual army, so for so like Van, uh, East is 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 in a commanding lead, right? But he's not like omnipotent. He has a, a large army, and most of his Movarks are all fighting here in Vanarus. And he took the capital, or he is about to, and he took this throne, or he is about to, I forget, because I, I don't have a scout here, unfortunately. Um, now, East has the ability with thugs and also with other reinforcements. He can wage a war somewhere else, but it's challenging. So part of fighting in a 2 or 3v1 against a, a more advanced player, you know, in this case, East. Part of doing a coalition is him not being able to defend all sides at once. So, for example, Ind here is going to try to move across and threaten this throne, which he borders. Great. We need to threaten East's thrones because we're worried about East winning by capturing Vanarus's thrones and then another throne. So, if suppose Ind was able to take this away from East, that would be great. Now. It would have been nice if In did this sooner. There is a risk here that, um, well, in this case, not quite, this is not a, a great example because this is literally super far away, but you can imagine a scenario where East was busy fighting a war in this region. But because Ind waits too long to start his contribution, East is able to wrap things up and then move his army back here in time to actually defend whatever push is coming here. So in other words, part of the issue with timing is you want to strike at the same time so that the player being struck from multiple sides can't just move his big army, defeat one guy, then move it to another place and defeat somebody else. And Movarks can actually cover a lot of ground on land. So that's one issue. But... It's more than that. It's even if you're in a dominant position, your army isn't doing a lot of the work on its own. You're doing a lot of rituals. You're uh, devoting a lot of, let's say, magic items to a fight, a lot of gems to a fight. And those resources are not infinite either. So Ys is able to field, you know, a full army here supported by rituals, supported by magic items and things like that. Maybe, I'm sure he is rich enough to have another active army fighting down here, but he probably can't afford to also support that with the same effectiveness as he's supporting his main army. Or if he's big enough and he can do that for two armies, he can't do it for a third one. And so the key, the reason why you want to coordinate your efforts, and especially in terms of time, um, is because you want to divest all of the uh, resources that the leader has in this case um, which is not just the army, but also all the rituals and the magic items or whatever, the boosters, all the stuff he needs to make his army effective. So that's my concern here. It's that Ys has probably defeated the main armies from Vanarus, and he can afford now to, get, to redeploy a lot of the supporting elements in this war against Vanarus, to, for example, end here to be able to defend that. Um, that's my first concern. My second concern is that um, logistically, end has like a pretty, this is a long distance to cover, and it's taking end a long time to move all of this army over here. And just in terms of game turns, like, you know, to get all the dudes, these are like just human, like the chaff and the mages. It's going to take a long time to move back here and to actually start any kind of building up any pressure. If he had started five turns ago, he would be here already 
and East might have been forced to respond earlier. I mean, ideally, this would have happened 10 turns ago, but whatever. Um, Vanheim is in an even worse position because um, what I predicted at the time and what I would still predict based on this is, so if we look at, at East, what is he going to do? So he's going to take this from Vanarus. This is also Vanarus's, which he'll take. What is the last throne that he takes to win? Well, he could go for one of these, but I'm going to do what I can to make sure that doesn't happen. So assuming it's not one of these, it's not going to be this one. This is really deep into in. There's no way he goes for here. Similarly, there's no way he goes here. Um, clearly, this is this province here is the throne that he takes to win the game. Um, because he knows that Van Heim and Inn have been fighting a war, a, a pretty bloody war for a long time. So both the players are somewhat weakened, but Van Heim, I think, is in a weaker position than Inn. Van Heim lost more troops in this war. Um, and this is bordered, this is completely surrounded by East and East has his big army right here. Like, East is literally conquering Vanarus here with a major army. He just m keeps moving north and just gets the stone. There's no logistical challenge at all. And honestly, this has been... This is what's a little puzzling to me from Vanheim's play, is that this is so telegraphed. This is such an obvious move, right? East comes and kills Vanarus, and then... Literally, his army is here. It keeps moving in the same direction and just takes this throne from, from Vanheim. It's such a predictable move. Um, but Vanheim does not appear to be significantly prepared for that move. Um, and yeah, that's just like, that's too bad, right? But maybe he can, maybe he can still salvage it, right? Maybe he can get everything back here. But there's just not a lot of turns left to be able to do that because East only has a certain number of turns left for him to take these thrones. And presumably he's going to operate in parallel and be able to take this right after. So these guys really waited till the last minute. Here it's to the last minute because suppose Ind does have enough like, suppose Ind is strong enough here to defeat East and push in this direction. Not in a 1v1 context, but because East has most of his army deployed over here, I could believe it. I could believe that Ind has a big enough army if he kind of doom stacks. I believe that Ind would be able to take this throne, but how many turns is it going to take? Because East can keep this the walls up here for a very long time. He can recruit a lot of chaff. He could do iron walls, things like that. So... Although I think this can work as a move, I don't know if it'll work soon enough. And then conversely, or, or along, actually it's not conversely, but on the other side of the map here, um, can Vanheim hold on to this fort indefinitely? So that's the, that's the issue here. Okay, turn 52. Let's go to turn 53. Murdering Winter. So now we have a bit of an idea of what Jotunheim was hoping to do, was waiting to do. Uh, let's actually see. So there's also a battle here. Uh, but Murdering Winter uh, killed 59 units out of 153 that it targeted. And now let's look at the battle in Obsidian Waste. Uh, the last remaining heroes and our remaining army. Now, if you look, my guys are... Oh, some of them are starving too. Jeez. I didn't realize how bad it was. Oh my god, my guys are all starving. That's pretty bad. Uh, they're starving and also uh, they don't have a lot of hit points. <laughs> In fact, they have almost no hit points uh, because they just got hit by Murdering Winter. Now, fortunately, um, Ulm troops have... Uh, maximum they're like stronger than humans so they have more hit points than your average humans which is just enough to let them survive a murdering winter um now what has uh jotunheim brought to bear he's got some mages and he's got a lot of scratty one two three four five 
another thug, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I counted ten fully geared thugs. All right, let's see what happens. So self buffs, imps. Okay, the thugs are getting most of their buffs up. Uh, we're actually literally the the iron darts, if anything, are killing all of their blood slaves. Um, we also just killed all of his mages. <laughs> like all the mages just got wrecked by Iron Blizzard, which is exactly well. A couple of them retreated, but uh, yeah, we just killed. Oh, what was this guy? Was he? This might have been just a battery. Yeah, I think this was a battery. Um, he had brought a whole bunch of Shaman too. So, yeah. So, our, our first few volleys of Iron Blizzard have literally killed his entire mage backline. There's like one lady left here. She's a communion master, but there's no communion left. Um... And that is significant for a few reasons. I mean, obviously, it's a good thing for us. But he was counting on this communion to provide more targets for my guys to hit, right? He's counting on the thugs. If the thugs get completely surrounded by guardians, they'll die. Um, and if all of my evokers can just shoot, you know, shotgun blasts of Iron Blizzard into these guys, they'll also die. But if there's a ton of imps or skeletal uh, spam, then uh, that will dilute my uh, offensive firepower, and that will give his guys a much better chance. Um, but we can see, I mean, already I, I just saw one get deleted here. Uh, let's just visually try to keep track of it. But I just saw one get wiped out by uh, a bunch of iron uh, blizzard. Let's try to keep track here of the rest. We'll try to go slowly. Uh, I think that was another one that just popped. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've still got seven. So we've got seven up front here, plus this guy who's a thug, and then there's a eighth guy in the back here. And there's nothing really behind. Earth meld. Fletch Earthmail here, really kind of slowing down the advance. Um, at this point, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still, all of them are still alive. Although this guy has routed, this guy did not have a Berserkering Axe. So, oh, he was he was already down to fourteen hit points. I can see why he ran. Oh, he got Battle Fright. That probably didn't help. Oh, one got deleted here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so this guy running, and then this is still a thug, by the way. Notice my guys are on advancing cast spells, so they're up front here. Um, so the Iron Blizzard is really a tightly packed. Uh, see, look, it just deleted that that guy right here. Blade Wind is not going to be super effective. Uh, let's see. Looks like we deleted another one here. So we've got only four thugs left. One, two, three, four. Now these two don't have Berserker Axes. This one does, and this one does not. So only one of them is Berserk. And he hasn't yet gotten to my mage line. Now he's about to. <laughs> we got some very brave mages up in front. So one mage just gets deleted. You know, a bit of my front line here is getting deleted. He lost this thug. Just got wrecked by Iron Blizzard. Losing a couple mages here in front. Oh, nice. We got a little false fetters or whatever. This guy died to sun. I didn't catch what the spell was that killed him, but uh, he got evoked to death. 53. Oh, he's routing. He's running away. This guy also running away. Uh, 
and that's it. So we were running low on uh, troops here, and you can see our front line has evaporated. And he did get through and kill some of my mages. But unfortunately, he didn't have um, axes well distributed on all his thugs. So a good number of them, well, I think in total, at the end, these two ran. But by then, they would have died if they didn't run. Um, but there was like two, at least two guys that ran before they should have. So morale and obviously winning wins had to do with that uh, was definitely uh, an issue for that. But um, just the evocations were too strong. Just absolutely deleting his units. Um, so we lost uh, nine priest smiths and two master smiths. Uh, so that is, that hurts. We lost nine of our guys, but we killed... Um, like, he has no more raiders left. Like, this is the nail in the coffin, really, for him. Because um, we've been regrowing our pre-smith uh, numbers back home. So, I think... And, you know, we lost most of our guardians. Like, this is... Um, this doom stack has been reduced in effectiveness. But Utgard also no longer has anything that can... Um, that can uh, threaten... How, how do I want to say this? You know, the priest smiths with the Iron Blizzard is what was carrying this, plus the chaff in front. We've lost the chaff and a lot of the priest smiths. But Jotunheim has also lost the things he can throw at this Doomstack, and we have a second army that is pretty large over here. So this army is more than sufficient to defensively protect against these thugs and keep this area firmly under our control. Meanwhile, we have a new army here which has a ton of priest smiths that can make its way, in theory, like this and, you know, challenge these two forts over here. And I can just fly over my pretender because he flies, so we could just bring him over and rejoin with this army. Um, but let's look to see if there was anything else... Oh, we ran into a werewolf here. We didn't have enough guys. Oh, because my guys get... Oh, jeez, they get stuck on the PD dude. Wow, he really did a... Yeah. So because this was me raiding offensively, they didn't even get through the hearse here, who with his uh, just a regen bless was able to survive the black plate infantry long enough. Um, but still, this is a little thin. Like, this wasn't a squad that was set up to take on a werewolf. Although squads like this, if they get lucky, might be able to take on a werewolf. But a werewolf with a vine shield versus nine infantry, probably going to win. Um, this was just a small raiding party designed to take little provinces. Uh, that would not be defended. Yeah, kind of like I have going going on here. Oh, we kill... Oh, it looks like he must have... Uh, there must have been a Scratty that retreated from the main battle into the fortress. Oh, no. Well, maybe he was, but for some reason he's on retreat. So that's too bad for him. Oh, he might be the guy who cast uh, Murdering Winter. That's what it looks like, given the water boosters that he is wearing. Okay, let's take a look at the map and look at what we're doing. So we are able to take this fort. Um, we're moving most of our guys back over here just to clear out these troops, get access to this income, which we so desperately need. We would really like to come and liberate the siege here on Jotunheim. Uh... And we also really want to take this throne province back. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm taking the time here to make a... To contact the Lamia Queen. Um, one of the issues... I don't have any nature mages besides my commander. Um, and I would like to be able to um, do some more nature spells <laughs> uh, in battle. 
I'm researching alteration, so I might get to alteration 7 for mass protection, things like that. Um, I also got enchantment 7, so I'm now able to do serpent's blessing. Um, so, uh, and relief, right? So these are important spells uh, that I would like to be able to cast. It's just that my pretender is busy doing Wailing Winds and just can't buff up enough and cast those spells and not be too fatigued out. Uh, so, that is the plan, turn 53. Let's go to turn 54. Uh, we can see that East has already started attacking Vanheim. Werewolves, two werewolves kill another small um, raiding party. Uh, huh. Where was this? Well, I don't remember this battle. All right, the last uh, here is the seven samurai here. One, two, three, four, five, literally seven samurai plus one dude. I actually don't remember this battle at all. Um, it looks like, here, let's take a quick look. We've got Mostly master smiths, but we've got a certain number of priest smiths. We've got one, two, three, four, five. And then a bunch of master smiths. Importantly here, we have our prophet, but we do not have our god. So there's no wailing winds up. Uh, which is relevant because I don't see too many guys with axes. Now I had adjusted my script in my positioning. And I had moved all of my sappers to be more up front and my archers. Because the truth is, these guys have 20 protection with Legions of Steel. So they're in a great position to delay these guys. Um, and honestly, so are like Hoberg, right? Anything you could put in the way to slow them down so that my evocations can uh, hit them harder is a win. Um, I don't think anything has been killed yet, no. So we've got a guy in front. He's got... Now, some of these guys are not fully kitted, to be fair. So everybody's done their self buffs. They're all running in now. Uh, Blade Wind's not the most effective spell in this case. All right, now they're getting in real close range. Uh, but they do have to chew through... Uh, you know, a line of chaff here before they can get to the mages. Now they are all still alive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus uh, their leader here. Okay, one just gets deleted. Was it just, yeah, <laughs> iron darts. All right. There goes another one. That one actually looked like it was, there was some blade winds. Yeah. He might not have been uh, geared, right? Some of these don't, not all of these have high protection. Yeah, 18 protection. Although this one, no, this is a standard kind of kit for these guys. 17 protection, the damage is halved. How did we get... Oh, 12 protection? Hmm. That seems low. I just got a super lucky roll on that blade wind is what happened. <laughs> 14 plus 31, that's an exploding dice. That's exactly, that's what happened here. <laughs> okay, so we got a lucky roll on a blade wind is what happened there. Oh, where's, uh, where's their leader? Did he just die? Oh yeah, he got deleted by, uh, by iron darts as well. Uh, one guy runs away. That's just running away from getting hit a lot. And perhaps Battle Fright? Yeah, Battle Fright. And not Berserk. And then we kill another one up here. I didn't quite catch what happened to him. 
Only three guys left, and they still haven't got... Well, they got through most of the chaff. Oh, Iron Blizzard. <laughs> just, this guy was at like 55 hit points. He just got deleted um, by a close-range Iron Blizzard. Uh, this guy's got like a... Um, both of these guys are rooted in place from the fire. There's a fire spell that does that, and Iron Blizzard just deletes it. And that's it. So even without Wailing Winds, we just delete all of these thugs. Yeah, I mean, I kind of have a vague memory of this fight, but uh, I'm glad I saw it again, because I didn't remember. I When I think back of this game, I remember the first two big fights that I had against Jotunheim, but there were actually like a total of four or five fights where he had a significant number of thugs. Um, and so it's really interesting to see how these guys were... This was just enough chaff to keep off like seven... Uh, eight thugs. A couple of them didn't, weren't fully geared, but they all had like two, you know, the weapon slots. They were all, they were well geared. Um, but uh, yeah, close range evocations are really deadly. Okay, I'm glad we got to see that. Um, anything else? No. Okay, uh, we took this province. Um, now, since we know, okay, so we know Is is already fighting Vanheim, um, and he's going to take this throne. Is has not yet moved on to this throne, so we know, like, in other words, the game isn't going to end, like, next turn, and depending how long it takes, and assuming Vanheim can pull a defense here, we have time to move with this army out and kind of defend uh, Jotunheim from Jotunheim. Um... In this case, uh, I am. Uh, this army is now mostly expended, although it's just a bunch of mages. And now, for reals this time, I don't think he has much he can throw at me, because we've just been killing so many Scrotty, that I'm actually going to take this only mage army and move up here. And they've got some earth gems. Maybe they're going to do earth elementals. Yeah, I think this guy's going to do a couple earth elementals. But I literally put, like, all my archers in front, and it's like, all right, just evocate everything. Um, so we're going to move up this way and try to rejoin and get another Doomstack going. Um, meanwhile, the the Lamia Queen I got is actually Death 4. <laughs> um, so we just made a mini thug kit for her using uh, secondhand Scrotty gear. Uh, and she's just going to break Siege. But this is just Vidi Archer, so I'm not too worried about it. But she's just going to do Invulnerability Bark Skin. I think that's because I don't... Yeah, I don't have um, Soul Vortex yet. So I'm hoping that she'll cast Soul Vortex here. And then she'll go attack. Lamias are interesting. They have 50% regeneration. They just don't have a lot of hit points. Um, so it would be nice if I could get like a Coral Blade or something like that. Um, but uh, for now, Frostbrand is going to... Well, this is free gear. It came from Scratty. Um, interestingly, they are, uh, cold-blooded, so they get tired, uh, very quickly. Um, unfortunately, so that's why I put, uh, Boots of the Messenger on her. Um, sadly, we, uh, well, we didn't have any other reinvig items, uh, and it is a little chilly here. But, uh, but hopefully she casts a Soul Vortex, because that helps, uh, get fatigue back okay i don't see any uh, anything else significant here let's move on to turn 55 okay so the lamia queen does her job does she cast soul vortex let's see vulnerability bark skin Raised dead, horde of skeletons, raised dead. Oh, I actually, yeah, I think I just script her to cast spells. Uh, not even to attack. Um, yeah, it looks like that's what I, I did. Uh, we were fighting Vidi Archers, guys. Vidi Archers are pretty bad. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that works. Uh, anything else? Is this a uh, mage force? Yes, this is the mage force. 
Yeah, I don't think he, he has his guys on retreat here, so this must have been a blood hunting operation. Given the number of blood slaves that I just saw there. Uh, here, oh, this is, this is worth watching. Uh, this might be on the throne province. I'm not 100% sure. So the last stand of Vanheim <laughs> fighting against E. So what does he have? So he's got Air 4 dude in the back with a lot of air gems. A bunch of vans on the side here. We've got some vans over here. We've got some storm demons. Some guys with their blood hunting gear still. Air 2s. We've got some... Oh, he has a crystal throne. More vans. And then a ton of vine hears. And then some herdmen. Meanwhile, on this side, we have... Uh, a bunch of Movarks. We have some uh, Kernu Druids. These are Earth Astral plus a random. Um, let's see, we've got a Morgan Sorceress here. Air 4. Oh, Gate Cleaver. Yeah, it makes sense. With a ton of air gems. Nature 2. So that's going to be like mass protection, I assume. Uh, we'll look at the golems in a minute. I'm just trying to see if we have any thugs here. Uh, earth boots and astral. It's not quite enough earth gems to do an army of gold, so I'm not sure what it what exactly it was for. Another earth gem. Uh, let's see. We've got a golem here. Oh, so these are the thugs. So he's got a. This is a phoenix pyre golem with a lot of reinvig and trample boots and then we have a horror harmonica golem uh with a ring of returning and all of his guys have good shock resistance oh this guy even has a uh, heroic ability enormous strength okay not great on a golem okay So Horror Harmonica, he puts up Wailing Winds. There goes, uh, so this looks like Fog Warriors. Looks like he put up um, Serpent's Blessing. Anti-Magic. Nope, looks like we have Anti-Magic probably on this side. Uh, no. I thought I saw it go off. Anyways. There it is. There's the anti-magic. Um, a lot of dudes already running here from uh, Wailing Winds. Thugs buffing up. Uh, I should... Let me put the colors here just to be sure there isn't any weird attack rear going on. That no, looks good. This one was doing anti-magic. Uh, ring of... Uh, the ring still hasn't proc'd. 
on this golem. Which means Wailing Winds is still up. I didn't, I didn't really look at this fight, I think, when it happened much, so it's interesting for me now to go back on it and see what's going on. Um, and what's going on is Astral Shield is what's happening here. So... Yeah, that's what's happening. All right, let's just look at who, at how many mages were brought um, on each side. There's actually not a ton of mages here from Vanheim. He was relying on his units to do most of the work. Um, so he's up against a, har a Hor Harmonica Golem, but he's up against Wailing Winds. So like half your mages are going to run, unless you've got uh, Dragon Hats. Um, like your mages are just going to run, right? So... All he can do is really buff his troops and then hope the troops do the work. And maybe he gets a few lucky vocations off. Uh, so I think Venheim did the best he could in that respect. He doesn't seem to have good nature access, but he got Fog Warriors up. Um, not that that's going to be super relevant. Everything here has magic weapons. So uh, not sure about the usefulness of Fog Warriors. I mean, even against magic weapons, it's like one free hit. So I guess sure, right? Um... I would have liked Mass Flight here instead um, because one of the things that you can do against an army like this is disrupt their buff cycle. So he had like a bajillion Ein here. If you Mass Flight and then just attack rear, um, they're going to land before you can get like your four spells cast in your buff cycles. And that's key because the golems don't have great protection. They only had like copper shields. They were relying on the Earth Mages doing Legions of Steel and Iron Warriors and things like that. Um, so if you can land and get a big Alpha Strike, you might be able to disrupt enough of the buffing cycle where you can move forward with the rest of the fight. So that's something I would have liked to see here from Vanheim. Uh, because I didn't see any defensive Storm or Staff of Storms used by Ys. So that's just a thought. Um, so without nature access, I doubt he has earth to do army of gold, uh, either the tech or the magic path access. Um, so he's kind of limited in what he can do. Um, if we look at, um, so in other words, it actually takes, cause these guys, act, these guys don't have great map move, great combat speed. They only have 11 combat speed. So it's taking them a very long time to cross the battlefield and get all the way here. Uh, the thing, but still you would think, okay, but once they get there, that's a ton of berserkers, right? These guys actually, when they go berserk, they had like 16, because these are like berserker five. So they've got like 17, 16 attack, high damage weapons. Even though these guys were buffed, they were up to like 26 protection. You're going to get chip damage. Uh, with Berserker, this is like 16 damage, like 20 plus, uh, sorry, 20 plus damage on 16 attack is definitely going to hit the Movarks. And you saw that it did eventually hit some of the Movarks. But, um, these guys, as we see, all right. So, some of these guys are slowly chipping away at the Movarks, and that's great. Good for them, right? But, all of this army here is completely frozen solid from Paralyze, and that is from Astral Shield, uh, which is triggering a lot because these guys have length one weapons, and these guys have longer length weapons. So Astral Shield, one of the things uh, that it affects, um, one of the things that's relevant is uh, having a short weapon makes you more likely to get affected by Astral Shield, and he also has, like, no magic resistance. He did not put anti-magic. These guys only have MR9, so that is a huge oversight here. Not doing anti-magic, uh, and he had the Astral Mages to do it, so not doing anti-magic means these guys have MR9. They're kind of get constantly Astral Shielded, 
So it's not just the golems that are doing Astral Shield, but it looks like... Okay, maybe not this mage. Alright, it looks like it's mainly the golems that are doing it. But this golem, on his own, is like... Like, look at this. All these guys are completely paralyzed from Astral Shield. That's like half... Like, it's almost half the... The army here is not doing anything. Like, could you imagine if all of these guys were, like, properly filtering in and surrounding these troops. Um, that'd be, you know, that would completely change things. And because he's trampling, he's actually walking through the whole army, paralyzing everybody. Like, these guys are all paralyzed. They're not even close to him, because he was here before. Then he trampled over here, paralyzed more guys. Um, pretty cool here. Um, so this is effectively what he, what Ys has done with this golem here, paralyzing everybody, is he's kind of divided the force here from uh, Vanheim. Uh, you know, if Vanheim only has half of the army from before, then you're thinking, yeah, okay, half that army against a bunch of fully buffed Movarks is maybe not going to be that impressive. Um, and that's exactly what's happening. He basically split the army in half by having half of it paralyzed here. And now, although there are a lot of red squares, a lot of this is just swarm crap, so it's not super relevant. Um, not to mention, like, I don't think Vanheim has what it takes to kill this golem, like, just solo. I mean, once he's fluffed. Like, a 28 protection, tons of reinvigoration Phoenix Pyre golem, I think he could probably almost solo kill this army. So... Right? Like, let's not <laughs> get ahead of ourselves. Now, how could you kill this? Um, you need Earth Mages, I think, would probably shatter this and kill it. Um, you need to be able to kill it multiple times in succession very rapidly or fatigue it out somehow. There are ways that you can kill it. Uh, unfortunately, he has 25 shock resistance, so there's not much that Vanheim's mages are going to be able to do, plus Wailing Winds is up, so his mages are really not going to be able to do much, because they're going to run away. Um, so, I mean, Vanheim had an uphill battle against this golem, um, in the sense that it's not clear he can kill a Phoenix Pyre golem, but it wasn't the fact that it was a Phoenix Pyre golem that won this fight, it was just the Astral Shield. In fact, he kills his own golem here, but it reappears back there. Um, it was the uh, Astral Shield on this Golem in front, totally wrecking all the design here with only 9 magic resistance. Um, that really did the job. This guy with his quarterstaff being a boss. Yeah. Okay, cool. Got, got, glad I got to pay attention to that fight and see what happened. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a quick look here at the map. And... Um, yeah, so... Uh, sorry, I misclicked here. So, okay, so what's happening here is this is the turn where, uh, yeah, it was the battle that we saw here on Troll Peaks, it was, yeah. So, Vanheim tries to defend his throne here, but fails. Because of the gate cleaver, no doubt, um, the fortification gets broken, so this almost gets one turn capped. This throne has already fallen to east. This throne apparently gets one turn popped. Ind, I don't think, is anywhere. I'm not able to get here in time, but Ind has not broken through this fort in time. And so, basically, next turn, Ind is kind of going to win. Or he's get, he next turn, Ind is going to make his moves to capture the last thrones he needs. So, this he can't take in one turn because it's forted up, but this is not quite forted up yet. So, I need to move here and be ready to defend this, which is what I'm doing. Um, because if I was East, I would definitely try to magic phase this and, or whatever, like fly or something, or try to get some, uh, something here. Um, so that's, so I'm going to move back and, and try to, try to take this. So that is, um, that is the plan for this turn. 
Uh, and meanwhile, I mean, you know, assuming East fails, we're going to try to keep retaking control of as much of our land as possible, can, fighting the good fight. Uh, we're trying to get up to Alteration 7 for mass, mass protection and things like that. Um, yeah. So, I think that is a great point of suspense to leave uh, this episode on. And I think we're just going to do one more episode in this series where we're going to look at the last turn or two. Uh, because spoilers, this is going to be the last turn or two, um, and uh, maybe do a bit of a an after action report or review and tell you guys what I thought about this game. So see you guys then. Take care. <laughs>